Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Facebook Live on St. Charles Parish Hurricane Ida Recovery. My name is Dr. Victoria Smith, and I'm the Associate Medical Director for St. Charles Parish Hospital. And I'm joined today on this Facebook Live by St. Charles Parish President Matthew Jewell and St. Charles Parish Hospital CEO Keith Dacus. So to, in today's Facebook Live, we will be discussing the ongoing recovery and rebuilding efforts post Hurricane Ida. St. Charles Parish as a whole and the hospital were significantly impacted. We will discuss what the next several weeks and months look like for the hospital and parish and what residents and patients can expect. We'll also discuss resources available for parish residents and hospital employees. So let's kick it off with you, Keith. Can you, uh, we'd like to start with an update on the hospital. Can you give us a status of hospital operations? Thanks, Dr. Smith, happy to. Um, hello, everybody. So it's, it's hard to believe that uh, 30 days ago, um, you know, we were hit by this hurricane. And in some respects, it seems like it was just yesterday that, uh, that Hurricane Ida hit Louisiana. But there's been a lot of work over the last 30 days. Um, a lot has been accomplished. Um, you know, really to start out, I'll say all departments, services, uh, providers are all back in their office. Um, the hospital is open. All clinic offices, pharmacy, outpatient services are all open as well. Um, as you guys probably heard, you know, on August 29th, we evacuated the hospital. Um, but we did keep open the emergency department as being the only medical facility in St. Charles Parish. Um, we wanted to make sure that we were here to serve the residents uh, during and post uh, the hurricane. Um, the inpatient units opened back up with only six days. Um, and then most of our outpatient services opened back up within nine days. We also, we reoccupied our emergency department on September the 14th. So we did move our emergency department um, after the storm. Uh, we took on a considerable damage in the emergency department, um, had holes in the roof, uh, HVAC units were slid across the roof, um, but we were able to uh, move the emergency department to interior spot within the hospital to keep it open. But then we reoccupied the original space uh, September 14th. We've also uh, reopened all of our uh, operating rooms and surgical services as of September 15th. Um, so Dr. Smith, we're, we're open and we're excited to see everyone. Yes, we are really excited to welcome um, everybody back. Um, so one of the things we also wanted to really encourage all of our viewers um, to not forget their health care in the midst of these challenging times. I mean, we know that this has been just so challenging, especially in St. Charles Parish. In St. Charles Parish. Uh, we also know that we're still in the grips of a COVID pandemic. Um, but fortunately, we have the means to make COVID a preventable illness through vaccination. Uh, so I wanted to let everyone know that we are offering uh, COVID vaccines um, at the Hoss Tuesdays and also at our Auctioner Retail uh, Pharmacy. Uh, we want to encourage people to receive a safe and effective uh, COVID vaccine if you're not already uh, vaccinated. Also, we really want to encourage you not to put off your regular health care, your health care screenings like breast cancer screenings, cervical cancer screenings, colon cancer screenings. Um, all of those services are up and running um, at the hospital and in our clinics. Uh, and also on top of dealing with, um, you know, any challenges you may be having at your homes, we don't want you to let your health slide. Uh, so our physicians, our hospital departments are ready to welcome you back to take care of your chronic conditions as well. So President Jewell, can you walk us through the current state of the parish post Hurricane Ida? Yeah, absolutely. And first I wanna say, Thank you to Oshner and to our hospital board for your commitment uh, here in St. Charles Parish uh, to getting our hospital back open very quickly. I'll tell you that, uh, you know, just a day after the storm, when I saw the damage to the hospital and the, you know, just the damage around the entire parish, um, I wasn't so confident that we would be where we are today. 
and to, to know that we were able to get uh, our, our emergency department back up and running and, and all of our services within just a couple of weeks and then to have you know all the the normal services that our hospital has in just one month uh, is really just a testament to um, to the level of commitment that you do have to the residents of St. Charles Parish to ensure that they have quality access to to health care and um, and we appreciate that so the status of the uh, parish obviously uh, our parish received a considerable amount of damage um, from one into the other we've done a damage assessment uh, and we've had 500 homes completely destroyed. We've also had 14,000 homes that have sustained major damage. And then the other, uh, um, I'm sorry, 7,000 homes that sustained major damage and 14,000 homes that sustained some sort of damage. So um, every, literally every structure in, in St. Charles Parish has had some sort of effect from Hurricane Ida. And um, now the big task uh, is to make sure that we continue to deliver the same high quality uh, water and sewer services, uh, those important utilities, and then working to get um, working to get uh, internet and other things back up and running for our residents. Uh, and we've been putting a lot of pressure on Cox and AT and T to get that up and running. And we know just how important that is uh, during the COVID uh, times that we're in. A lot more people are utilizing telemedicine. A lot more of our our students are utilizing a virtual option for schooling, uh, and then just so many more people working from home. Uh, so uh, just like you all, we don't want people to neglect their normal health care. Uh, and that's part of uh, what, we're, what we're working on to make sure that all the utility services that St. Charles Parish is responsible for, plus the other things uh, that, um, that the other utility companies are responsible for are, are put back in place and are, are working at, a, at an acceptable level. Um, obviously, there's a lot of debris on the ground. Uh, we're working to, to get that up uh, as fast as we can. Uh, but I think we're in a really good spot uh, from where, like I said, from the day after the storm, what I saw to where we are now is just a whole world of difference. Um, we're committed to making that, you know, making that improvement on that restoration process every single day. Thank you so much, Matt. Um, Keith, I want to just flip back to you. Um, you know, during the storm, as you shared, you know, our emergency department, you know, ended up in a clinic and we had to cancel uh, and delay many services and also appointments. Um, can you talk about the process that we're going through uh, to get patients uh, back into uh, received care? Yeah, sure. So. It, like you mentioned, it's a work in progress, uh, for sure. Um, if you also recall, you know, right before the hurricane, we were in the midst of a fourth surge of COVID. And we were very lucky that we had a few appointments that we had to reschedule or postpone uh, due to COVID-19. Um, but now being that we are, you know, eight to nine days uh, post hurricane where we had to cancel some appointments, uh, postpone some appointments, um, we're back. Um, all of the networks have been established, reestablished, and being able to start scheduling patients again. So we're at about 25% of our appointments have been rescheduled. We're um, a little bit over that in terms of the number of procedures that have been rescheduled. Um, so just, you know, eight to nine days uh, really puts you behind uh, in the number of procedures that are out there that we want to have being rescheduled. So. Um, we're available. Um, the, the phone lines uh, you can call to schedule your appointment. You can also go to my auctioner uh, to schedule your appointment as well. Thank you. And I just want to also assure people that we're being very proactive um, in reaching out to patients uh, to get them back in. Um, but we also know people are dealing with communication challenges. And, and thank you, uh, President Jewell, for all your work um, to get services back up uh, and get people um, you know, back uh, at home um, and safe. Um, and so I just want to maybe move into what are some resources that are available for residents of the parish who need assistance, uh, who were, uh, you know, had damage or, or issues as a result of Hurricane Ida. If you could talk about that, President Jewell. Yeah, so one of the one of the biggest needs right now, as I said, we had 500 homes that were completely destroyed, um, is direct housing for our residents. So um, if we have residents who are who are watching this right now who need some sort of direct housing, their home is completely unlivable and they need a place to stay. You need to uh, contact FEMA and apply for that direct housing component through FEMA. 
Um, and we have a couple of places where you can apply. Uh, one is at the Allen Arterberry building uh, on River Road in New Sarpy. Uh, we have a FEMA team there uh, right now. And then at our community college at 13145 River, um, I'm sorry, 13145 Highway 90 in Boutique. That is our DRC, which is a disaster recovery center. Um, that DRC is going to be in St. Charles Parish um, for some time. And residents can go there if they've already applied and maybe they were not approved for something that they probably should have been approved for. Uh, they can help you with your application there, help you fill it out. Additionally, we have what we call DSA teams that are on the ground going door to door uh, and making sure that people in our hardest hit areas and our most impoverished areas are getting signed up for the FEMA benefits that are available to them. Additionally, our community college uh, through the United Way has served as a distribution point for many types of food distributions, supply distributions. We have the Red Cross out available in, uh, in and around St. Charles Parish. And additionally, uh, all of our nonprofits and our churches uh, who have been working with the United Way as well have done such a great job making sure that hot meals and supplies are being distributed uh, throughout our entire parish. So there is a lot of resources on the ground. Uh, my office through our Office of Community Services is also connecting people with Catholic Charities uh, and other nonprofits to uh, get resources into hands of people who need them. Great, thank you so much. Um, and I just wanna also let our viewing audience know that we are taking questions. Uh, so if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to put those in the chat and we will try to address them during this uh, her, um, Facebook Live. Um, so Keith, uh, you know, President Jewell has talked about many of the resources that are available for affected residents. Uh, we know that many of our employees of St. Charles Parish Hospital are also, um, you know, are also optional employees um, and they're folks who live in the parish. Can you talk about some of the resources that are available for our auctioner employees? Um, and, you know, auctioner has provided uh, many things for employees, including us going into the gas business uh, to provide that. But Keith, if you could talk about what resources are still available for employees who are affected by Ida. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Smith. You're absolutely right. So uh, a large number of our employees are residents of this parish. And so I'm, I'm extremely grateful and appreciative of the partnership that we have with Auctioner and St. Charles Parish Hospital, because without this partnership, we wouldn't have been able to um, jump in so quickly and start providing many resources to um, our employees. And as you mentioned, yeah, we did get in the gas business for a little while. We were offering um, free gas for our employees so they could get to and from work. So we, we gave away a little over 13,000 gallons of gasoline. Um, we also uh, fed our employees as well as the contractors that were working at the hospital. So we gave away a little over 4,000 meals, um, you know, hundreds of bags of ice, uh, pallets of water, soda, energy drinks, all sorts of things. We even had a mobile laundry on site so our employees could come and do their laundry. Um, one of the uh, great things that we had set up was what we called an Oshmart. So our employees could come and get some needed supplies. Um, so cleaning supplies, personal hygiene things, uh, scrubs, uh, dog and cat food, batteries, uh, all sorts of things we had uh, to give to our employees uh, for free. Um, you know, many of our employees also uh, lost their homes. Um, they lost their cars, they lost their clothes, they lost everything. And so we are putting uh, some of our employees up in hotels um, to make sure that they have housing uh, for this foreseeable future. Um, right now, we are also um, looking at resources that our employees will need ongoing. So we have a, a hurricane resource line that's set up that our employees can call, get connected to not only auctioner resources, but also um, nonprofit resources, federal resources, state resources, help with FEMA applications, all sorts of things to make sure our employees are taken care of. Um, and you know, I'll also say that it, it wasn't just um, the hospital that jumped in and helped our employees. We had many members of the community that also jumped in. So a lot of food was provided to our employees. Um, I want to say a big thank you to you know, a couple of businesses and organizations here, you know, Birdies, uh, one Team, One Fight, uh, G Smith Motorsports, 
Atlas Power and Friends, Nola Crawdat, Dragos, Raising Canes, Copeland's, and uh, the Hanville High Steppers even stepped in and either came on site and cooked for us or either donated food for all of the employees. So it was really amazing to see the support that we had uh, here in the community looking after our healthcare coworkers. And one of the last things I'll bring up is that we have set up uh, an employee assistance fund for St. Charles Parish employees. And if you don't mind, I'll put a little plug in here that um, anybody can donate. Um, our employees are donating to help each other out, but anybody can donate. Uh, the number to call is 504-842-7110. Again, that's 504-842-7110. Um, but you know, Dr. Smith, the most amazing thing about this is that these employees that have probably been the most impacted, they come to work every day with a smile on their face and they're looking to care for all the people that are coming into the hospital. So it's, it's just amazing to see their resolve. Um, and it's inspiring, to be honest with you. It definitely is. Um, and the, the response from the community has been um, overwhelming. Um, those Hanvel High Steppers, let me tell you, thank you for that pastelaya we had one day. It was great. Uh, we had people cooking in the parking lot um, and employees, everybody so uh, appreciated that. Um, President Joel, can you talk about other ways um, anybody in the community can be involved in recovery uh, for themselves and for others who might be more impacted than they are. Yeah, wait, can you present that question to me one more time? So how can the community um, get involved with um, recovery efforts um, in the parish? Uh, Keith talked about how people, people might be able to support and have supported recovery at the hospital, uh, but how else can they get involved in the parish in helping with recovery? Sure, look, I mean, there are numerous nonprofits and church organizations right now that are working to uh, get supplies into the community. Uh, so I, I would say that one of the biggest things that you can do um, just as a standpoint uh, is just a neighbor helping another neighbor. So checking in on uh, your neighbor, especially if you have a senior citizen living near you, uh, someone who may be living alone, make sure to check in on those folks and make sure they have the supplies they need. Uh, this is something that I've pushed ever since I've been in office because we had COVID in the very beginning and we, we were trying to protect our seniors uh, with from, from COVID. And I was telling everybody, make sure you can go to the store and get those supplies that the, the, your, senior, your senior citizen uh, who may be a relative or maybe a neighbor needs. Uh, but it, that still holds true today during the storm with so many people who may need assistance um, with gutting a home or bringing debris out to the street. Maybe it's cutting a tree in, in the neighbor's yard. Uh, additionally, if you want to get involved in a group organization, your local church is probably a good resource. Uh, they are probably already working on things uh, right now, like we've seen so many church organizations do. And additionally, uh, the, the United Way of St. Charles Parish is always looking for volunteers to help with, with distributions and collecting supplies. Um, so if you, if you have supplies that you want to donate, you can bring those down uh, to the River Parish's Community College in Bootsy. Uh, United Way is holding, has a little warehouse there where they're holding supplies for distributions. Uh, but it's really easy to get involved. And, and that starts with uh, just checking in on your friends and neighbors to make sure that they have the, rel uh, the supplies and the resources they need. Great, thank you. So I want to pose a question to both of you. Um, we know that recovery from a storm, as we know, is not a one day, week, you know, even month process. Um, so uh, start with you, Keith. Can you talk about long term issues you feel like the hospital um, may be facing as we continue to recover from Hurricane Ida? And then we'll move to Matt to talk about um, issue, long term issues for the parish. Sure, absolutely. So it's a process um, for us to go through, just like many of you, um, when we're looking to rebuild, when we're looking to um, get back to normal. So we're, we're kind of going through the same process. We have uh, done a lot of construction at the hospital, but we still have a lot to go. We have temporary roofs on certain parts of the hospital that we'll need to be finishing up. Um, you know, all departments and services and providers are, are open. 
but it's a it's a long road that we'll have to get back and um, build the hospital back to the state that it was in. Um, if any of you have driven around the hospital, you might have seen our infusion center that was in on the back side of the hospital. It lost its roof, uh, completely ripped off. Um, so we've now moved those services into the emergency department and are offering um, monoclonal antibody infusions for any patients that have COVID-19 uh, milder symptoms. So there's a lot of things like that that we're going through right now of uh, so all the services are being provided. They just might not be in their original location, um, but it's a, it's a long road. So I'd ask the community to please be patient with us. Um, you know, pardon our construction. Please pardon the contractors that are here. Um, parking might be a little difficult for a little while as we have, you know, cranes and things in the parking lots. Um, so I ask you maybe allow for a little bit more time to get into the facility, to get in to see your doctor. Um, as you know, might have to uh, look for a parking space or something like that. Um, I would say the, the good news, though, is that, um, you know, back in April, when the uh, residents of St. Charles Parish approved for the hospital for a millage, um, we're restarting those projects. And we have a lot going on right now that's going to bring uh, world class care closer to home and make it convenient for many more people, many more residents of the parish uh, to receive care closer to home. One of those that I'm really excited about is our new uh, chemo infusion center. Um, so we are on track to open the chemo infusion center in 2022. Um, that was one of the big projects that we had identified as a, a need for the parish um, that residents were having to go outside the parish to get these services and want to make sure that we can take care of you close to home uh, here locally. So a, a lot of work that's going on, a lot of uh, progress that we're going to have to make. Um, but I just ask to be patient with us as we go through this process. Great, thank you. And I'll just also add, we have, uh, despite Hurricane Ida, continued to expand services. Uh, we had just launched optometry with a wonderful opt optical shop in uh, Destrehan. Had to shut that down for a little bit, but that's reopened. We're expanding our cardiology services. We've expanded uh, primary care. Uh, we're going to be expanding our sports medicine uh, coverage, uh, doctors who can take care of our youth who are involved in athletics. Uh, so despite uh, Hurricane Ida, despite the pandemic, we're continuing to grow uh, to provide services. So Matt, I'll turn it over to you to talk about long-term issues for the parish. Yeah, so obviously when uh, we've seen just how much damage across the parish, I spoke about that earlier, nearly every structure in St. Charles Parish sustained, sustained damage from Hurricane Ida. Uh, we had some residents that had flooding we said some residents and most residents had uh, water intrusion either from wind driven rain or from roof damage. So uh, one of the longer term issues that we're seeing linger on is the debris pickup, uh, which is it, when you look at um, our 800 streets that we have in St. Charles Parish, every street is lined with debris. Uh, and when you break down about the number of residences we have, it's about 100 yards of debris per home. Uh, so you're looking at some of these homes uh, have one of these trucks will pick up one home and be full. And so uh, we have over 50 trucks on the streets. We've already picked up over half a million yards of debris. Uh, so we are working. We've been working since about four days or five days after the storm to pick up debris. And that has ramped up. We've opened a second uh, debris management site on the East Bank, and that has increased our efficiency to get more debris off the streets much more quickly. Um, but we are looking at potentially another month uh, or so of debris pickup uh, from uh, from Hurricane Ida. So, um, you know, it kind of it's a, the same the same thing that uh, that Keith said is we, we're asking for your patience as we do this. There's just no real quick way to pluck two million yards of debris off the streets. Uh, we are working on getting more trucks in, uh, but there are finite resources when you have so many other parishes that are also. Uh, affected by Hurricane Ida in the same way that we are affected. So debris pickup is going to be a lingering thing. And then obviously, uh, just like the hospital, we saw uh, an extreme amount of damage to a lot of our government buildings. 
uh, the courthouse being one of them. We worked really hard to get our courthouse open. Um, so our first floor and third floor are back open. We are, we do have no, normal services out of there. Our judges have been moved to a, uh, a different location down on, uh, on River Road. Uh, so court will be operating for some time out of that location while we make repairs and a, uh, a remodel to the second floor of the courthouse. Um, and of course, some of the other, the other normal uh, services that we provided, like recreation, uh, will take some time to, to come back as we uh, repair any safety hazards at our, at our parks throughout St. Charles Parish. But we're committed every single day to uh, working towards that final goal of getting St. Charles Parish back uh, to its normal great condition that we always have it in. Uh, and that's our goal. Well, thank you. So I want to say, you know, thank you, President Jewell. Thank you, Keith, uh, for joining um, our Facebook Live. Uh, and thank you for sharing uh, the all of the Hurricane Ida uh, recovery efforts, both at the hospital uh, and the parish. I want to encourage everyone who's watching to visit auctioner.org uh, and schedule your appointment to come and get world-class care at St. Charles Parish Hospital. Um, and we are committed, uh, both both as a parish and as a hospital to ensure uh, that everyone can get back to recovery um, and get back to good health. So thank you so much for joining and have a great afternoon.